We are back with the thrilling conclusion of the interview with Corey Steuben from Monroe and Associates. A huge thanks to them for giving us so much of their time. I did want to thank the uh, Tesla Owners Club of Michigan for helping me uh, coordinate my trip to get out there to Michigan to meet some really amazing people, to get some really amazing interviews, many, many more of which will be coming out over the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. When you look at this build, at this Hyundai Ionic, do you see anything that stands out as being uh, noticeably primitive? Like when you say, because the mega castings are not an industry standard yet, but are there any things that are just kind of missing from cars that you can't, that you shake your head at? Well, so in our industry, we're trained to focus on the things that truly make a difference. But as if you're a consumer and you bought this vehicle, does it make or break it that you ha have or don't have giga castings? No, where, where it really matters is look at the end goal for Tesla Motor Corporation, Motor Company, whatever, Tesla. They wanna make vehicles as fast as possible. So these traditional OEMs, their factories are set up to produce vehicles that are primarily stamp steel construction. So think of the tremendous capital expenditure to <coughs> remove all those robots, put in casting machines, and do a, an unproven technology. So it's actually from a macro level, a large OEM that's established may not see the financial benefit to push giga castings into this. But I feel like Tesla's vision's, vision is further out where they want to reduce the hours per vehicle to build in their plant to the lowest possible number so that they can scale up as fast as possible. As fast, yes. I don't believe the Ionic 5 is selling at the same clip as the Model Y, which is the best selling car in the world. So because of that, the business case behind some of these more aggressive changes in body structure aren't there. You know, Until the scale reaches yeah, that tipping point. You may see future products that, that incorporate more large castings, but right now these larger OEMs are taking more baby steps in the right direction. They're maybe focusing more on the, uh, their thermal systems and their electric motors just to work and achieve all the functional objectives um, and not necessarily push the envelope. So we're going to get into some some very hot topics here. Unibody versus exoskeleton. Help us understand the difference because in the comments people get very heated from... Yeah, so technically <laughs> a unibody right here is an exoskeleton mm -hmm. because the structure is on the outside of the vehicle. But where the delineation comes is look at the outside skin. So this outside skin is very thin right here. Mm -hmm. Notice how thin it is? Yes. So if you remove this outside skin, the primary load path for all the structure, if you, they call it a body side outer. It's very thin. You remove that, you could drive down the road missing your body side outer, and I'd say 99% of your structure would remain intact. It contributes a little bit, just like glass contributes, but the vehicle could probably drive around perfectly fine. A true exoskeleton would mean that the outside skin is the primary load bearer. Okay. So with, if you were to remove the outside skin of the Cybertruck, you sh it should literally fall apart. And I made a comment that was very hotly contested uh -huh. that I saw the initial picture of the Cybertruck. Yeah. It was missing the stainless steel exterior at the time. And I could see the huge giga casting in the front, and I could see what you call a body side inner. So body side inner is, it's this inner piece right here, this inner structure, as well as the, the secondary inner structure. So you have this inner structure and the secondary inner structure without the body side outer. Because there was no stainless steel on there, there was no body side outer. And from what I could see, the B pillar was structural. It was a structural B pillar, most likely made of hot stamped steel. And because of that, the front, you could see the giga casting. And with the giga casting, you could see where the shock mounted and it looked like the structure went across. So the vehicle was sitting there 
without fenders on, without a hood, without a bumper. And I believe that the front of the vehicle, the A pillar and the B pillar, showed me that the whole vehicle was not an exoskeleton. Now that does not mean that the rear of the vehicle, when they put that outer stainless steel on, will be tied together and then have that, out, that, that body side outer contributing greatly to structure. But my comments were based on what I saw in the front of the vehicle, and I said it looked like a big old Model Y. And what I meant by that is a Model Y has a massive giga casting in the front. It has a structural A pillar, a structural B pillar, made out of hot stamped steels, you know, very strong A and B pillar, and that's what I saw. So um, I stand by my comments. And Elon later in, in, uh, in not investor day, in shareholder day, said it's an exoskeleton, and I. I'm not arguing that there's exoskeleton properties that sure. were not shown in that photo of sure. that day. And I, what I think I hear saying is, if you drew a Venn diagram of unibody and exoskeleton, there's quite a bit of overlap where one is kind of the other and vice versa. Yeah, and my qualification for, think of an exoskeleton as an actual, like a bug or a... Mm -hmm. Or if you remove that exoskeleton, they soft, die. It's soft or dies. So if you remove the front fender of this vehicle, can you still drive? Effortlessly. Yes. Yes. If you remove the doors and the lift gate, can you still drive? So all the openings, sure. That, that's, that's a given in both scenarios. And because of that, unibodies are very close to being exoskeletons because th this body side outer being so thin is more of a stylized covering and all the structure is just slightly inside of that. Mm -hmm. So where do you, there's no like court defining where is the outside, at, where does the outside end and, and where does endoskeleton on a car start and where sure. does exoskeleton sure. start? There's no judge or jury on that. And in general, the structure is on the outside. And like you think of a NASCAR, right? A yep. tubular frame. Yep. That's an endoskeleton. Literally it's, 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 the frame is on the inside. Yeah. These, the structure's on the outside. Yeah. But where, where you delineate that line? Uh, How do you feel that the Cybertruck's skin is going to fare in weather conditions and, and road, salted roads? Do you see any issues? Better than regular steel. That's what I thought. That's what I, steel. There's a couple of comments that were very strange. So the Cybertruck looks to be going to 48 volt or architecture. Mm -hmm. How much of a weight savings do you imagine that's going to represent? Well, it's hard to say. Right, because you can, haven't seen it yet. I'd have, to, I'd have to figure out what's the weight of all the copper low voltage wiring. And then there's a certain percentage savings. So I wouldn't be able to draw a conclusion without okay. actually any data. So would you say that times a million units it's we're talking real money and real weight there eventually will be a payoff i think there'll be short-term pains as you try and ramp up the supply base to supply all of the small ancillary 48 volt the components bulbs, the switches. that aren't typically 48 volts gotcha. there are a lot of high energy or high wattage systems that have already transitioned to 48 volts like steering racks and uh, e-boost systems um, that have been in place on mild hybrids for years. And so there is a supply base for high wattage systems, but not your low wattage systems. Okay. Uh, is the Model Y cheaper to build than the three? Cheaper to build? Yes. Or does, is the total cost lower? Oh, I don't understand the difference. So cheaper to build, meaning the cost to build it in the plant, the manufacturing costs. Right. I believe they're nearly equal to build because they're almost identical. There is more parts on the Model Y. There's the risers mm -hmm. for the seats. There are other panels that are larger and more costly. So the Model Y costs more okay. to build. It costs more and it's slightly more effort because there's more content. Okay. There's more mass. More atoms. Yeah, so yeah. based on, I mean, we've, we've done full cost analysis on both. Right. And, um, but when was the last most recent model of three? It was the, just the one, right? Yeah, and that had the complicated rear. Uh, yeah. Multi-piece um, multi rear and stamp steel front. Yeah. So 
our Model 3 is real old, so I guess your point is there's the savings from the giga castings and the reduction in fasteners. Does that offset the inefficiencies in the initial, initial Model 3? Maybe. So I guess my answer there is I'd have to revisit that. Yeah. It could, they could be converging. Yeah. And, um, but for but another the, week but or the two. New, the new Model 3 yeah. may then re-slot underneath that. Yeah. One thing I was wondering, you might know this, is when they make um, the all new Honda Accord and it's going to be out on that platform for seven years or whatever before they do a big redesign, how many of the year by year changes do they plan in advance? It's, they typically will plan a cadence for what they call mid cycle action or they, they're different names for different OEMs. It's planned in advance and it's typically they'll do they'll figure out they want to do a new fenders, new hood, new fascia, new taillights, new rear fascia, and then like uh, infotainment updates, seat updates. They'll, they'll plan that out, yeah. usually one or two over a period of time. Gotcha. It's not that they like, oh, let's just build this same vehicle for seven years. Right. No, they, they'll, plan, they know. they'll plan out the time frame because they know that it has a positive impact on sales. Okay, do you think anybody is ever going to get around to actually selling the skateboards the 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 bare sleds for someone else to put a car on top of mm. no comment i mean that's you could say yes you could say no because it already exists in some way shape or form because the meb platform is being shared, you know, shared. pretty widely and yeah. uh so it depend, depends on how you, you interpret the question are they just, they're not like rolling the skateboard out and people are putting a, another top on it. They actually have to engineer, engineer quite there's, a lot. There's too much engineering. Because it's, you know, coach builders with like GM with their, with their for buses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's just, I, I don't think it's time. Right. Okay, so on the plaid, anyone can build it is what I hear you saying. All they gotta do, all they need is quite a few billion dollars quite a few world-class engineers. Yeah, now this, this doesn't take into account the amount of engineering effort in the software and the thermal system control. So I'm not trying to discount all the effort that any OEM, not just Tesla, puts into the development of a vehicle. And the Model S has been highly refined over the years. The initial Model S and X that we, that we saw as we were performing benchmarking for other companies, were wildly complicated and had a ton of complexity, fragmented EV, high voltage architecture. And now the new Model S and new Model X, they share a lot of DNA with the components from the Model 3 and the Model Y. If you look at how the, the motors and inverters are used, I think I can go show you one right now. The Model S inverter, if you grab one, it says Model S Plaid. But what do you think it says when you look at the inverter? It says Model 3. That's what, it's fun. Because they're, it's a carryover part. So you have this 1,040 horsepower vehicle that's using the same inverter that drives the rear motor of a Model Y. Yeah. It says it here somewhere. This is there it is. Y. And it says Model 3 on it because it's the same yep. piece. Yeah, and there's no need for them to right. change that 3 to Y. I mean, this is the same. But, but over the years, Tesla has made improvements from this inverter board to the next to the next, and we've carefully monitored all the changes over time. So the chips used to complete this task on our first Model 3 and the chips used to complete the task on this Model S, although technically backwards compatible, they make revisions over time, so they're accomplishing the same task with less cost. Or if there was some chip constraint, maybe they couldn't get a certain chips because of the chip shortage, they may change the orientation on the board to achieve this in a different manner. Wow, that's thick. That's thick. Good Lord. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I don't think I forgot to ask anything. Mm -hmm. Did have to crack out my notes there in the middle, but okay. Well, uh, Corey, obviously. Thank you so much yeah, for your no time. Problem. Yeah, uh, and it's good to see you. Yeah, yeah, good to see you too. And uh, yeah, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Let's do this one. Uh, yeah, what do we miss? 
What do we misunderstand? Leave it in the comments because, uh, because there's always something. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of good questions out there. And I would tell you to follow Monroe live, but if you're watching this, you already do. Check him out anyway. Okay. Yeah, thanks. All right, thanks. So that was it. What'd you think? There's so much great information in there. You just gotta love it. Uh, I did want to thank my patrons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. I've got uh, YouTube memberships enabled. I've got uh, Patreon. It's all linked probably on the screen right now. And I've got, uh, you know, uh, Twitter memberships coming, apparently. That's a thing. We'll figure out some great content to put up there as well. And in the meantime, I guess I would say stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.